father's really gonna love the surprise party. We got him presents. Mm -hmm. We got all the family coming over. Honey, I don't know what else I could do unless I just strip naked and pop out the cake. <laughs> yeah, right now, why don't you do that? <laughs> Sweetheart, we want this party to warm his heart, not stop it. <laughs> I got it. Don't touch that cake. Where you been? I got hung up over at the mortuary. I ran out of embalming fluid and I had to siphon a little antifreeze out of the hearse. <laughs> you know, I've got to stop riding in Eddie's hearse. People look at me and start taking their hats off. <laughs> ah, there's nothing like the smell of a fresh flower to liven up a party now. Have a sniff. All right. <laughs> You know, when they passed out brains, Ed got falsies. <laughs> well, I guess I better load up for Carl. You guys be quiet, that's Polly Jack. Come on. Uh, oh, Samantha, cut the lights, everybody hide. Uh, come on, Julie. Do it. Maybe he forgot his keys. Sam, open the door. Happy birthday, Carl. <laughs> well, I guess we must have caught you working undercover. That's a wonderful disguise you got on, son. Great makeup, good wig. <laughs> Grandpa, can you see you recognize me? Grandpa, it's Aunt Blanche. Oh, of course, Aunt Blanche. Who the hell is Aunt Blanche? <laughs> You remember, it's Mom's sister. Oh, yeah, the rich one who always looks like she's smelling something bad. <laughs> um, Aunt Blanche, could you come up for Dad's surprise party? It's your father's birthday. Well, that's a surprise for me, too. <laughs> no, actually, sugar, I came up to see you girls. Been a long time, you know. Want to be sure my nieces are growing up okay? We are. Thanks, Janelle. I'm sure she tries. <laughs> Hello, Blanche. She takes great care of us. Must do it between snacks. <laughs> hey, I remember you. Carl's wedding. <laughs> You're the one that sat on the frozen ice cream. <laughs> and I remember you, Ed. You're the one who put it on my chair. <laughs> yeah. Smell my flower. What kind is it? It's a new kind of water lily. That takes care of your weekly bath. <laughs> That's him, it's Dad. All right, everybody hide. Where do I go? Oh, just put a bag over your head. <laughs> Surprise! Yay! Happy Happy birthday, birthday, Happy birthday. Birthday. Happy birthday. Hey, look at that cake. Hey, yeah. The presents. Oh, boy, I'm speechless. Good, quit while you're ahead. <laughs> but guess what, Carl? Especially for your birthday, Margaret's sister Blanche came all the way up from San Diego for a visit. Eddie, a joke is a joke, but that's not funny. That's all I need on my birthday is a surprise visit from the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> Hello, Carl. Guess whose broom just touched down? Blanche. It's good to see you. Thank you. It's good to see you, too. Thank you. 
That's about as high as I can pile it. <laughs> you haven't changed much, have you, Blanche? No, you haven't either, unless you count going gray, bald, and a little paunchy. What are you doing here, anyway? Oh, frankly, I miss the girls. And I thought this would be a nice time to sort of drop in and have a look at them. Well, there's only one look to a customer, Blanche. I hope you have a nice trip home. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. I thought this might be a good time to come get to know my nieces better. So why don't you send Nell down to get my luggage? Oh, Miss Blanche, I would just love to tote your watch and lift your veil. Surprised you can lift your own veil. <laughs> So maybe you girls could go out and get my bags, huh? Uh, sure. Which car is it? It's the one parked behind the hearse that has a bumper sticker that says, We stop for six. <laughs> Hurry back, girls. Can you have some cake? All right, everybody, belly up for a toast to the birthday boy. I'll start with one that used to go over real big in Poland. Dravce Laska Podnodice Novizalina <laughs> that means may see-through blouses come in style again. That's disgusting. Oh, no. Disgusting is I wish cows could fly so they could drop a splatsnik on your head. sure you're teaching them proper eating habits. We already have Porky and Petunia. <laughs> we don't need the three little pigs. I'll get it. I wonder who that could be. It's my gift. Is Chief Kaniski here? Yeah, I'm Chief Kaniski. What can I do for you? I have a present for you from your brother, Ed. But where is it? Right where it ought to be. <laughs> Her top doesn't know what her bottom's doing. <laughs> hey, Pop, you think she'll make me a milkshake? <laughs> <laughs> Of course not, dear. You don't have the equipment. I feel I ought to arrest her. Or something. Oh, uh, not a little number shake like Tushy. <laughs> I just can't believe that young girls are being exposed to this. I've never been so embarrassed. Well, you shouldn't be embarrassed, honey. You may not have the moves, but you sure have the push. <laughs> You gonna butter the edges so you can get it all in your mouth? I'm hungry. I'm just having a little snack. Sure. That's what Jaw said before he swallowed that boat. <laughs> what are you doing sneaking around in the middle of the night? I couldn't eat before. Blanche makes me feel guilty eating anything in front of the kids. Oh, Blanche, you know, I know she don't like me, so she's jealous of my body. 
<laughs> Tell me, what is it she has against you? Why is she so down on you? Nah, Blanche never liked me or my family. She always thought that Margaret married beneath her. Ah, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> you know what? When Margaret and I got married, Blanche wore a black armband. <laughs> Make it a little dry. No, stay here. I'll get you some milk so you can wash it down. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Chief, please, a little lady playing charade. Here you go. Okay, if you want to play, let's play. <laughs> All right, it's a movie. Okay, uh... I was choking, Blanche. If I believed that, I'd believe pigs could fly. Wait a minute, I'll open a window for you. Shh! Nothing. The father was just choking on some food and I got it out. It's okay. Girls, get back upstairs. You do not have to watch any more of this filth. What did you just say? In case you haven't noticed, there are ladies present. And they do not have to watch their father playing grope and tickle in the kitchen. Blanche, I'm going to do something for you that's going to leave you smiling. What's that? I'm going to rip your damn lips off your face. <laughs> Believe me, she knows Hanky Panky when she sees it. <laughs> oh, she does, does she? I suppose that's your doing, too? Stop it, Aunt Blanche. Leave Mel alone. Oh, honey, that's all right. It is not all right. I am not going to stand by and watch your father conduct his orgies in front of my dead sister's children. All right, now, Blanche, that's enough. Now, Nell loves these kids just as much as I do. And if anything were to happen to me, there's only one person in the world I'd want to take care of them, and that's Nell. She'll never get these girls, because I'm going to sue you. What for? For custody of my flesh and blood. I don't believe this. Blanche is claiming I'm an unfit father. Gee, there is nothing unfit about you. Well, maybe your clothes. <laughs> well, don't you get it? He's trying to get my girls away from me. He's mm -hmm. gonna laugh this case right out of court. You'll see. Well, maybe you're right. Who would believe that I'm messing around with you? <laughs> right. Who would believe you get to heaven before you die? <laughs> Who can that be? That must be Garrison, the lawyer I asked to come over. Chief, I told you, we don't need a lawyer. Nell, please, let's not argue right now. He charges 150 bucks an hour. That's about five bucks each time he pushes the doorbell. Stop! <laughs> Thanks for coming over, Don. I know how busy you are. Sit down. Thank you. Nell, this guy is the best. That's right. My motto is, I'll get you off if it takes me the rest of your life. <laughs> okay, why don't we look at the complaint? Well, tell me, what do you think? Does she have a case? He can take the girls away from us? <laughs> What's so funny? Well, I'm not sure yet. I just got to the part where you're smearing mayonnaise all over one another. 
When did the alleged obscene behavior take place? There was no obscene behavior. This is ridiculous. Who is going to believe that? Oh, please. <laughs> well, you do live in the same house. Listen, honey, I don't fool around with no mess, and I don't mess around with no fool. Interesting philosophy. I'm glad you left me out of it. This is crazy. I mean, no judge in his right mind is going to take three well-adjusted kids away from their father. You're wrong. In California, the law says the overriding consideration is the welfare of the children, regardless of who the natural parents are. Now, that judge believes any part of what your sister-in-law is claiming, you'll never see those kids again. Now, Mrs. Ross, would you please tell the court what you saw late on the night of the 16th? Now, as I recall, you happened to be going down the stairs to watch Sermonette, as, as I understand you do each night. Well, I, I saw this woman with her arms around that man, and they were locked in a passionate embrace. And she was jiggling herself all over me. <laughs> Your Honor, the man was gagging. I certainly can't blame him. <laughs> oh, Kizatsky. <laughs> what did you say? Good night, Grandpa. <laughs> He's got an allergy. Well, I'm allergic to old prune faces who lie through their teeth. <laughs> One more outburst like that, and I'll have you removed from this court. Is that understood? Yes, it is, Your Honor. Ow! Oh, your gums are sharp. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Ross. You may step down. Uh, your Honor, a plaintiff would like to recall Carl Kaniski to the stand. Sir? May I remind you, you are still under oath. Stupid oath. Carl, you don't have to take that kind of gaff from a man in a dress. <laughs> now, Mr. Kaniski, could I ask you to explain to the court again what exactly it is you do for a living? I'm the chief of police of Glenlawn. I'll bet you work a lot of long hours. Yes, sir. Away from home. Yes, sir. In fact, I'll bet you're not home very much at all, are you, Chief? Some guys may spend more time with their kids than I do, but the time that I spend with them is quality time. Okay, now that we've established that you spend almost no time together, what do you do when you are with your children? Constructive things, fun things, but things to teach them about life. Bowling, fishing. Last week, Samantha and I there went to a demolition derby. You have a good time? Well, not exactly. There weren't any good car wrecks. She's right, Carl. You are a stupid oaf. <laughs> Thank you, Chief Kaniski. You may step down. You've been very helpful. For an absentee father. Perhaps now we should turn our attention to the person who has had the most profound influence on the lives of the Kaniski children. Your Honor, I should like to call to the stand Ms. Nell Harper. All right, wimp. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> How are you today, Ms. Harper? Refined, intelligent, and pure as the driven snail. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Ms. Harper. Is Nell Harper your real name? Of course it is. Now, what kind of question is that? Well, it's not unusual for uh, aliases to be used by people with criminal records. I don't have a criminal record. Hey, you're under oath, Miss Harper. I wouldn't want you to commit perjury. The record shows a 1974 conviction for indecent exposure. This is getting interesting. Speak up. <laughs> this is crazy. Well, actually, the, uh, the particular violation listed is uh, mooning. Oh, hey, that's nothing. Oh. I imagine it's quite something. <laughs> you ought to listen. See, I accidentally sat on this waffle iron, so then I had to raise the window to cool off, and that's the truth. 
That's not indecent exposure, that's assault with a deadly weapon. <laughs> I'm going to assault you with my foot. I've taken all I'm going to take from you. I object. Overruled. You are nothing but a cheap tramp who ran away from home when she was just a kid. You have the nerve to think you're going to bring up my nieces, my flesh and blood. No one can take better care of those girls than I do. And what are you going to teach them? The only education you ever got was from some country school in Alabama for singing in sleazy sewers. I don't care if it costs every dime I've got. I'm gonna take those girls away from you, you cheap, uneducated, you, you... Fred. What? Fred. Say what? You black woman. That's not it. Oh, yes, it is. That's the bottom line. You don't want your nieces being brought up by some black woman. That's not it at all. They're my sister's children, and I have to protect them. When your sister, their mother, was on her deathbed, I was there. Not you, but this black woman. And she asked me to make a promise that I would see the little girl growing up OK. I made that promise, and not you. That judge or anybody else in this court is going to make me go back on that promise. Well, I'm going to stop you right here and right now. Grant, their mother is dead. Now, haven't they suffered enough? Do you really want to take their father away, too? You want to rip their hearts out? What do you expect me to do? Just turn my back on my sister's kids? They're all that's left of her, and I, I am not going to leave them to someone like you. You have been coming down on me and beating me in the ground ever since I've known you. I want to tell you something, and I swear before God this is the truth. If I thought it would stop one moment's pain for those little girls. I would drop the lawsuit. I would. I'll even go farther than that. If I thought it would help them, I would get on my knees and kiss your lily white feet. Your Honor, please make it, make it stop. Mrs. Ross, do you, do you want to drop this suit? Case dismissed. Mr. Daniels, will you drive me home, please? I'm sorry. I only wanted to help. I really just wanted the girls to be happy. Nell, huh? you were terrific. Yeah. Great work, Nell. Great work. Thank you. Uh, now I'm going to talk to the judge. About what? I'm putting in for custody of the belly dancer. 